Hello everybody. Today we are doing express brush strokes and I'm taking what I learnt at uh, lovely Jane Dwight's, uh, I think I went to a workshop day of hers, what I took away from it. I can claim to be a master of Chinese painting, that takes a whole lifetime and 5,000 years of development. But um, what I learned was how to use a brush expressively. Obviously, they are using primarily Chinese brushes, and I think you do need one of those to do it. What you need to do is get one good one. Um, uh, so this is a Chinese brush. It's got a bit more of a point than um, uh, a Western round watercolour brush. And I thought, oh, you could do that with Western round watercolour brushes. But turns out, no, you can't. So buy one good one. Spend at least £10 on it. Because if you get the cheap ones, they fall to bits and the bristles aren't very nice. There's a whole history of different kind of brushes. You can get goat and pony and badger and good pig. Uh, and I'm not entirely sure what this is. It will say in Chinese what it is. But one good one is all you need. And it's always very useful to have in a watercolourist kit. Uh, <clears throat> I just want to mention a few things that are in this book. This book is great if you want to dabble in uh, Chinese brush painting. It's uh, Jane Dwight. It's spiral bound and she's got many, oh look, she signed it for me. She's got many uh, exercises you can do and uh, it's a, just a lovely quick way of painting. And I think the reason why it appeals to me is you cannot fiddle. You cannot fiddle with Chinese painting, otherwise you spoil the chi. And I will get onto that why that is in a minute. So you can often get lovely elaborate boxes containing generally these elements. So you have um, a, a block of ink, which you're supposed to grind on your grinding stone or have your servants do it. Your three, four basic colours. This is a little scoop to put water in your painting uh, vessel and uh, they will often give you a seal as well so you get this kind of onyx seal and some wax uh, so hence this is Jane's seal sadly Jane died last year I don't know if anybody knew her but she was a lovely lady and um, very inspiring to a lot of people she spent a long time in Hong Kong and this is where she learned how to do Chinese brush painting <coughs> So you can get books like this. If it appeals to you, run with it because it is a lovely, fresh way of painting. There's a certain Zen-like quality to it. Obviously very similar to Japanese painting as well, which is called Sumi. Um, but it's just the quickness of the stroke and not uh, flogging a, a watercolour to death. You can use um, uh, wa uh, Western watercolours, obviously, with it. Chinese watercolours, I think, are a bit goopy. And I've seen several people around with this nice set of very bright Chinese watercolours about, no, oh, I don't know, about 36 of them, I think. Um, but they are a bit, so it's kind of, it can be a cross between gouache and watercolours. But um, I'm going to use primarily ink today because what we're going to do is actually practice our brush strokes. So this is called the Scholar's Table. And there are four treasures within that. The ink, the inkstone, the brushes, and what was the other one? Uh, the paper. So let's go on to the paper. So Chinese paper is very different. It's got, um, it's very thin. And there are various different types. So here's some Chinese paper. And it's really, really thin. It's quite absorbent as well. So there are various kinds of which I can't remember. I think this must be uh, rice paper. And uh, that's the same as that one. And this is bamboo paper. So you can see how thin they are. And uh, the, what they do is they do their beautiful painting in one go. Because you can fiddle with this. And if you fiddle with it, you spoil the chi, uh, the life force. Um, and then one you've once you've done your beautiful painting that is then mounted on something else and framed and they can paint on silk and all sorts of other things mulberry paper and all sorts of other things and there are four gentlemen of uh, Chinese brush painting obviously their brush strokes are really important to them because of their writing and if you get a squiggle in the wrong place you said hedgehog instead of uh, eunuch I remember one example um, and you can get nice workbooks like this and it will the brush strokes you have to learn and the idea is I think you spend 20 years mastering these brush strokes um, and then you can paint anything and then you are considered a master it takes a very long time so it's all about developing muscle memory and I'm going to show you a nice little exercise uh, with bamboo but there are four gentlemen are uh, uh, which is not so visible in this book orchids bamboo which is obviously a fantastic 
uh, Chinese uh, influence, and cherry blossom and chrysanthemums. Although I don't know if that is a chrysanthemum. Yes, yeah, chrysanthemums. So there are various ways of painting these things. And um, as I say, you have to spend a lifetime mastering it before you're considered a good painter. So what we're going to do, we're going to start with bamboo, which is one of my favorite things. <clears throat> and there are two or three basic strokes involved with bamboo. I'm going to find my good Chinese brush. I think this is the one I like. I think this was a little bit more expensive. Sometimes you can get sort of cheap sets and people buy you the little box of treasures. But really, you just want one good one. Uh, <clears throat> just another thing about Chinese brushes, they have a loop at the top because you're supposed to hang them like that. Um, so they can dry. If you hang, if you put them in a pot and dry them like this, the water goes into the ferrule here and dissolves that and the bristles fall out. So don't do that. So I think this is my favorite brush. And I'm going to do this exercise in ink and particularly quink ink uh, because I'm going to do a little motif picture which you will get, uh, which you can do at home, which is really easy. But you have to spend the time getting the brush strokes right. So I'm just going to have a bit of water on there and a bit of quink ink. Quink ink black is the one to go for. So there's my little, uh, I think that's Japanese actually, but quink ink black, that's what you want because it does go back down to its constituent colours sometimes and has a nice blue tinge to it. So the first thing I'm going to do uh, with getting ready to paint bamboo is do something called the bone stroke. Now the Chinese hold their brushes like this. It's quite difficult for Westerners to get used to this. So they hold it like that quite loosely. They're generally uh, sitting at a high table or standing up. I'm, I always paint my watercolor standing up. So I'm just going to do various bone strokes. And it's all about manipulating the brush to make different shapes. So here we are. So I've got a sort of dilute version of uh, quink ink there. So what you do, you press your brush down like that and you drag it up. Oh, bamboo. And I'm using newsprint here, so you just want to practice and practice and practice. So this is newsprint, you can use newspaper. Uh, avoid the colour supplements though, because it's not very absorbent. The reason why newsprint's good for practice on, it's very absorbent. So I'm going to push that down and drag it up. And I'm going to do that a lot. Push it down, drag it up. So you press, you drag, and then you press again to get the nodes of the bamboo. You press, and then press, and drag it up. I always like to do uh, a Chinese brush lesson uh, in a general course. Not that I can claim to be a master of Chinese brush painting, as I've said, but just to uh, get that freedom of brush stroke. And some people just, they fall in love with it and run away and uh, want to do Chinese brush painting. Also very useful in painting pottery. Uh, because you have to have that kind of uh, dexterous brushwork. So I'm just going to go on doing this. And if you want to do this at home, try and do this, I don't know, for at least 10 minutes. So it does get a bit tedious, but you get used to how the brush works. So I'm using the brush on the side, as you can see. And I'm press, drag. So I'm going to go press, drag, press, drag. And I'm just going to get that ink, press, drag press drag and those poor people who have been in one of my general art courses will either take to it or not because it can be a bit uh, frustrating but it's a useful exercise to do just to get yourself confident with using a brush so use the brush on the side press drag and this is called the bone stroke they always have lovely ideas about um, uh, they have lovely names for things like the four gentlemen of the chest and the four no it's the four treasures in the scholars table and then it's the four gentlemen so if you learn how to paint bamboo chrysanthemum orchid and uh what's the other one cherry blossom uh, and you master those you're considered uh set up to be a good painter but it's all about learning how to uh use your brush fluidly and getting that muscle memory for brush strokes now this is one of my favorite strokes so i'm going to um go back to the bone stroke when I actually do the finished picture. But uh, this is one of my favorite strokes because it's uh, uh, it's like a golf swing and you're printing the brush. This is also comes in when you're sort of painting foliage on trees. You can print the brush. So what you do is, again, I'm trying to hold it loosely at the top 
I think you're supposed to use your fingers differently, but I can't remember. Uh, so you press your brush down and then you flick. And these are going to be the leaves of the bamboo. You press your brush down and flick. So can you see, so I've got this sweeping action like a tennis or golf stroke. So press that brush down and flick. So you lift it off, so you press and then you lift. Hey, they could be fish. I gave it a tail. Um, press and flick. Press and flick. I'm going around in a circle just so I can, when I come to do my bamboo leaves, I will uh, can do them in all directions. Whoa, that wasn't very good. So again, you kind of fill up a paper, piece of paper, trying to do this press and flick thing. So press and flick, press and flick, press and flick. So you're lifting the brush off as you come away. And I'm going to go press and flick, press and flick, press and flick. Press and flick. Can you see? So I should do that a lot. And I'm sure if a Chinese person could see me do this, they would be shuddering. But as I say, it's very good for uh, just getting confidence in brush strokes. And it's the it's the follow through that's uh, the work. And again, this is quite useful. Say I was paint, uh, uh, painting foliage on a tree. You can actually just use this to print leaves, as it were. I think I did it in my famous bluebell painting. So you can do it smaller just to get this idea of foliage in a tree. So you're almost printing the brush rather than thinking, oh my goodness, I've got to do a leaf like this. So you use the brush to its best advantage. And you see this little brush has got a nice point and can get some nice uh, flicking going on. So again, you want to fill up, spend at least 10 minutes in getting this stroke right because it's really quite difficult. But I'll just go through it again. So you press your brush down and you flick your brush up. You press your brush down and flick your brush up. Maybe if I did it like that, press the brush down and flick it up. Press down, flick, press down, flick, press down, flick, press down, flick. And as I say, it has a certain Zen-like quality to it. Uh, <coughs> to Chinese, uh, to uh, the painting process. And the Chinese, I think you're supposed to go into this almost Zen-like state. And of course, their calligraphy is very tied up with their art. So a person would write a beautiful poem and then put the art beside it, and they were equally important because the writing is so beautiful as well. And I did notice uh, in a, watching a Chinese primary school where they're teaching them to write, it's very difficult. They have to learn 20,000 characters, and um, I think consequently, uh, because they have this very uh, good visual acuity, um, they're really, really good from ob uh, uh, in observational drawing from a very early age. So I'm just having a bit of a flick. And you could use ink or you could use watercolor for this. So I'm just going to go on and have a happy flick. There we go. Uh, <coughs> so I'm just going to do a nice little exercise follow along if you want to try this but I urge you to practice these strokes that's the main thing to practice 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 those strokes um, so I'm just going to put my newsprint away and I'm just going to use ordinary cartridge paper you don't want anything too textured uh, this is actually quite thick cartridge paper but uh, you don't want rough watercolor paper I would the uh, hot press paper would do but cartridge paper is fine <coughs> so I'm going to do this in quink ink I'm actually going to do a moonlit bamboo scene with quink ink, and I'm going to use three different uh, strengths of ink. So I'm going to start with my darkest ink first. So this is actually uh, my quink ink, and I'm going to put quite a lot on there, and I'm going to do the darkest first. Maybe I should do the poets first. Oh, I can't remember. Right, I'm going to use this piece of paper for what? Uh, <clears throat> and so I'm going to do three bamboo stems and, and uh, with associated leaves. Um, and I love doing this exercise. I really should take up painting pottery or something. Uh, so this is a nice way of working. I just want to get my brush cooperating. Always useful to have some kitchen towel around your person. So here's one, uh, just so I can control the water on the brush. So I'm just going to have that there. And I'm going to use more or less. I'm going to try it somewhere. Where can I try it? I'll try it on that use print. Uh, so this is dark, so that is more or less straight quink ink. And I'm going to do my first bamboo stalk. 
Uh, so, and also with Chinese painting, they like to do um, uh, sort of living things the way they grow. So I want to start at the bottom. So I'm going to go like that and press up. Oh, look, apparently that's flying white, which is highly prized, as Jane Dwight Hunt very kindly told me. And so you leave a little gap for your node in your bamboo, and I'm going up again. And I'm going to press and drag. And I should press that. Ah, I'm fiddling. Don't fiddle. And I suppose I ought to finish this off. Press, drag. Uh, <coughs> and then there's a, quite an important stroke, although to a Western eye, I don't suppose we'd notice, is actually the little node in between. This is really important, and I should have left a bigger gap. You do a, either an M. Uh, can you see what I'm doing? Uh, yes, an M or a W for the little uh, nodes in between, or you go like this. But they are really important, apparently. Uh, so I'm just going to go like that. And the M is when you're looking down on the bamboo, the W is when you're looking up at the bamboo, and the straighter one is when you're looking straight at the bamboo. Then I'm going to dilute this quite a lot, and I'm just going to see what colour that is. Mm. I think I want a little bit more ink in there, so I'm just going to put a little bit more ink in there, so I've hopefully got a third tone. Yeah, that's pretty much the first, same as the first one, so I'm just going to add a little bit more ink. Yeah, there we go. Let's use that one. So I'm just going to use this, but I don't want it too wet, so I'm going to take a little bit off. And then I'm going to do uh, another bamboo stalk. So I'm going to start here and go up. Start here and go up. Oops, Perhaps I should move my ink. Press drag up. Oops, let's end it up a bit. That's not me not controlling the ink and I'm fiddling. You mustn't fiddle. I think this is why it, this appeals to me, because you um, with that very thin paper you can't fiddle, but this is not so bad. And these have not ended up how I wanted, but I'm going to add some more water here and I'm going to have a very pale uh, stalk further away in the moonlight. So I think I might start here. One, Take a little bit of ink off that. Press, drag up. And I'm going to go over this. Press, drag up. Press, drag up. Oh, they've all ended up the same colour, but never mind. Uh, <coughs> um, and then I need to put in my little M's and W's. So I've got to stick with the W that we're looking up at this bamboo. So it requires a steady hand. I can't put it there because it's disappeared. And it's quite nerve-wracking doing a Chinese painting for demonstration because um, sometimes it just doesn't work. In fact, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do five, I think. I'm going to actually put a very dark one in somewhere. So I'm taking ink directly. So I'm going to start there and drag up. Start there and drag up. Start there and drag up. And I'd better do down here. Start there and drag down. Oops. Oh no, it's all going horribly wrong. So I'm just going to do that one again. And put my M's and W's in. M, W. As I say, these are very important. Then I'm going to, I want a very pale one. You should always have an odd number. Is that very pale? No, I'm going to add some more water to that. Okay, and then I'm going to have another one over here, which is going to be very pale, I hope. Yeah, yeah that is paler. So I'm going to actually paint through, and I've got my flying white again, which I say is highly prized. Well, that's pretty much the same colour as the last one. Whoa! Ah, these are terrible. <coughs> okay, so we've got our little bamboo grove, and now I'm going to add some leaves. So I'm going to use this pale colour, and I say just take a little bit of ink on there, and do myself some little stems from which the bamboo can come off. So you want straight lines, um, and over here they come out of opposite. You may be able to see that. And so this one will be a oh, straight line, and you can have them branching off. Maybe I'll have another one there, another one there, another one there, another one there. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so now I'm going to do the leaves, which is, uh, as I say, one of my favourite strokes. Uh, so you want either one, three or five. So I'm going to start here, flick.
start here, flick, start here, flick. And again, these are going to run into each other, but never mind, start here, flick, press the brush, flick, press the brush, flick, and you flick by lifting the brush, as I say, like a golf swing. Um, just take a little bit of water off that. So I'm going to go press, flick, press, flick, press, flick, press, flick. Whoa, we're going to have five on that one. Press, flick. Apart from that, they should probably go downwards, but never mind. <coughs> Keep going. So press, flick, press, flick, press, flick. Um, and they have different kinds of brushes, as I say, they make them out of different materials for painting different kinds of things, which I don't know anything about, so I can't tell you. This is my favourite little one. Uh, it's in my kit all the time. It's quite resistant to becoming bent in my pencil case, so let's have a few little leaves here. Flick, flick, flick. And I probably want some here. Flick, flick, flick. So we're getting quite an easy design by very simple method, but it is all about the practice of the brush stroke. So uh, then I want to add a little bit of ink to my wash to get a darker version. What's that like? Yeah, that'll do. Um, and then, uh, better do something about this lot, they're all terrible. But the thing about Chinese brush painting, if it's terrible, throw it away and do another one. Uh, yeah, oops, I we'll have to say that's coming for that one. Ah, of course they should come up opposite, so that one should have one coming up here. It's very important, they're very picky about how their bamboo is constructed. Um, and then, so I'll have one over here. Um, and then I'm going to put some leaves on that, take a little bit of uh, ink off, and I'm going to go press flick, press flick, press flick. And again here, press, press, press. And then again here, press flick, whoa, press flick, press flick. And it is, by the practice, you get the confidence to do it. Uh, where was my other one? So that one's there. Uh, oh, we're over here. So let's do that one. Whoa. And then I've got one going on here. Uh, which maybe I'll take. No, I think. No, I like my leaves. I'm going to take it this way. My little twigs. And press. Flick. Flick. I should have waited for that to dry, but never mind. And then. Uh, I've got a slightly darker version. This is my first stalk. So I'm going from the lightest to the darkest. And again, I want a little tiny frond whoa, coming out here. So I can put some leaves on that. And then I want one over here. Whoa. Oops, that should be finer, but never mind. Let's just leave it at that. And then there'll be one down here. Uh, which goes this way, and that way, and that way. Whoops, that should definitely be finer. Right, so <coughs> I'm going to put a leaf here, one there, one there. Whoa! Ah, see? Can't spoil the G. And there. Oops, and that's got too much ink on it, so press flick, press flick, press flick. And where was I? Ah, oh, one over here. Press flick, press flick, press flick. I'm doing three mainly. And we're getting this nice little bamboo grove, I hope. And then I think I'm going to go directly in with the darker ink, because I think it's otherwise it's going to be quite messy. So again, I'm going to take this over here. And let's do press flick, press flick. So take my mind off those nasty stalks underneath. So that's four, so I need a fifth. Yeah. And where am I? So that's that one. So this one's going off here to my practice area. And then over here. So that one's there. So this will go over here. And then I will press flick, press flick, press flick. I should have one over there. But never mind. So we'll call that our little bamboo grove. And you can get quite a nice effect quite simply by doing that. Now, here comes the funky bit. So I'm going to put a moon on it. If I could find my moon. 
which has disappeared. And what I've done is actually put some quink ink inside this uh, little sprayer. And I'm looking for my moon template. I'm failing to find it. Where did you go? All right, let's use this. And you can put a moon in here. Yeah, about there, I think. And I'm just going to spray around it and sort of develop this kind of moon idea. So there we are, Misty Bamboo Grove in Moonlight. Ta-da! So it's very effective and it's quite a nice little exercise to do. Um, <clears throat> and as I say, the most important thing is that is practice. Ten minutes on each stroke, that's what you should do. Right, uh, I'm going to leave the bamboo alone for a minute. And then I'm going to move on to the orchid because this orchid stroke is also very useful. I'll just show you a couple of things, what I have done. So, uh, this is the chrysanthemum, which I'm not very good at, but I will show you that in a minute. So it's practice, 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 and I think when I did it with Jane White, White we did three, at least three large newsprints, you know, A1, I think they are, practicing these strokes. And then the orchid, we're going to do something simple like that, uh, and we're going to practice this nice sweeping stroke. And in fact, because it's a kind of bigger stroke, I'm going to use this bit of paper here. And again, I'm just going to use my favorite Chinese brush, which is this one. And I'm just going to mix myself up an ink wash of the quink ink. Like that. Yeah. And then off we go. So I'm. This stroke is lovely. It's all about differential pressure. So when they suggest you start Chinese brush painting, you just paint a line. So I'm just, again, trying to control the water on my brush. I don't want it to be too much. You just paint a line, and you just vary the pressure. So paint, 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 paint. Lift, 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 lift. And let's be lighter with my touch. Squash, lift, squash, lift, squash, lift squash lift and you can use that kind of idea to paint a very nice orchid leaf so this is actually going to be my practice sheet of painting an orchid so first one I'm going to try is just to so I'm going to start here and I'm going to press and then I'm going to lift and then I'm going to press so you get this lovely expressive line and maybe I'll pretend that this is an orchid so I'm going to press I'm going to lift I'm going to press and again, press, lift, press, lift, press. And then, so again, taking it from where it's growing. So I'm going to go like that. Press, lift, press. Whoa, a bit snaky. And then you just do this for 10 minutes as well. So you can just take a piece of newsprint or newspaper and just have a good old practice. So I'm going to press and lift. And I'm going to press and lift and press 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 oops no, that's not working I'm getting too cocky uh, <coughs> and it did take a whole day to really get anything good out of these things so uh, so push down lift push down lift and again, so I'm holding the brush upright, push down, lift, push down, lift, push down, lift, push down, lift. And then you want to be able to vary them a bit. <coughs> so maybe I'll start doing them upright. So curve round, lift, press, lift, push down, lift, press, lift, push down, Lift, press, lift. And then I want to vary these a bit. Uh, what else do I want? Um, one going this way. So if I press, lift, press. Press, lift, press. Wow, we're getting wind through the grass here. Press, lift, press. As I say, you don't have to become a devotee of painting but it's a nice thing to do and it will give you confidence with your brush strokes 
and you'll be able to paint an orchid really easily. Whoops, that's a bit rubbish. Uh, so let's concentrate again. Press, lift, press, lift. And let's do another one. Press, lift, press, lift, press. And you just do this a lot. And as I say, it's quite a nice zen exercise to do. So try and get that thin and clean. So again, you first thing to do is kind of press, lift, press, lift, press, lift, press. To do something like that and then try out different variations on orchid or grass or something. So press, lift, press, lift, press, lift. Whoa, it's going a bit river-like. Uh, obviously, there are a lot of other motifs in Chinese brush painting, but um, just practice them. And I noticed that not only Jane Dwight, but uh, Jean Haynes also um, studied in uh, China to get this fluidity and the less is more theory of painting. So just have a nice time trying things out and just keep going like that. So now I'm going to actually paint my orchid and I'm going to keep it simple but I am going to use a reference which is actually uh, from Jane Dwight's book. Uh, she starts out with four gentlemen. I love the terminology they use. So this is her chrysanthemum but this is her orchid. So I'm just going to do this in ink and then I might do one in colour, because of course you can do it in colour. So it's a nice simple orchid, not the blousy ones we have now. I can't remember what they're called, the ones we have all over the place now. Uh, so I'm just going to make up a nice ink wash, so a bit of quink ink, and some water, here, and I'm just going to test it out and see what it's like. Um, I think that will probably do. I might add a little bit more water, grab a bit of kitchen towel because I want to be able to control the amount of uh, ink on my brush. Okay, ah, so <clears throat> I'm going to try, well, maybe I'll do that one. Let's do that one, it's nice. Uh, no, I'm going to do that one, I think. It's just a question of getting to know your brush strokes. So here, it's getting to know this uh, press lift brush stroke and then here this little orchid is just these little um, almost like the bamboo stroke but smaller so I got this so I think I want that just there um, and I'm going to start painting uh, the orchid uh, and this is where it's difficult because I only ever do this once a year. I really should do it every day if I want to get good. So I'm just going to curve around and do that big. So I'm pressing, I'm lifting, I'm pressing, and I'm lifting. Not quite the same. And again, it all starts from where it grows. So here, I'm just going to take a little bit of ink off my brush. I'm going to I'm going to have a quite thin stroke. Then I'm going to press, and then I'm going to lift. And you just have to go with it. If it's gone wrong, you cannot go back and fiddle. This is why you should be able to do it quickly. And when it's gone wrong, just do another one. Uh, <coughs> and then I've got a nice, oops, just take a bit of ink off my brush. A nice ordinary one. So I'm pressing and then I'm going to lift. And then here I'm pressing and I'm going to lift. And you need at least five. So I'm pressing and then I'm going to lift. Um, let's have a few more, why not? And it has a funny little root as well. Of course, they have aerial roots, don't they? So you have little roots coming off, <laughs> which I don't think I've done very well. And let's have one more. Uh, so one here, which is more or less a flick stroke. And then I want uh, one over here, I think. Ooh, press lift. And call that a sort of orchid. These are a bit clunky, but as I say, you just have to go with it, and it's such a nice quick way of painting that you can't fiddle on. So again, I'm going to dilute this a lot. See what colour that is, nice and grey. And that's going to be my orchid. And again, you should do them how they grow. So I'm going to take a stalk from somewhere. Let's get a little bit of ink off that. 
Uh, let's try, we go up, and then we're going to have a little orchid come off here. Oh. And then again here, and then it goes like that, and it goes like that. Right, and then I'm going to go quite pale for my orchids. So for the orchid stroke, I'm going to follow her instructions. So I'm going to almost print the brush and come down. Oh, no, no, I'm flicking it too much. So let's practice that. And then we have two here, and then one here. Uh, I thought they were asymmetrical and probably one down here. So let's put some orchids on our orchid. So we've got one there. Ah! Too much. One here. You'll have to forgive me. And one here. And then we're going to have one here. I don't want to be quite so, won't be quite so flicky. And again, as I say, this takes practice. Yeah. And then over here, oh, look, a bud. We'll call that a bud. We'll call that a bud. And then we got this one. Uh, too much. And that one. And that one. And then they have little dark centers. So I'm just going to use a, a little bit of stronger ink. And maybe put little dark centers. Persuade me that they are really orchids. <laughs> okay. <coughs> I've done better orchids in my life, but you get the idea. Practice, 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 practice those lovely smooth brush strokes. Okay, I just wanted to show you a couple of other things which are quite useful to know and come up in different kinds of art, in fact, um, <clears throat> which is something called color loading. Um, uh, I've seen this actually used in barge painting, of all things, because, again, it's that very quick way of painting uh, and you want two different colors on your brush so in fact I'm going to go I'm going to first try and do a uh, color loaded bamboo stalk so I'm just mixing up here so ooh, I've got sap green I want a good puddle of wash in sap green well, maybe a bit of the darker green as well. Uh, so we'll, I think we'll put it in there. So a nice dark green, as you can see, and then yellow as well. So I'm going to actually fill my brush with yellow. And then I'm going to just take a little bit of yellow off. And then I'm going to pick up on the tip, on the tip, um, uh, the darker green. And I'm going to do a bamboo stalk. Let's have a look. Whoa. You see, so you're getting the... Oops, I should have done it. Spoiling the chi. Let's do that again. So again, I'm going to pick up a good bit of wash. Take a little bit off. And I'm going to pick up this dark green on the end of my brush. I don't know if you can see, so it's darker at the end. So again, I'm going to start down here. Ooh. Oops, flying white, which apparently is very good. That's rather a bent bit of bamboo. And then I'm going to do it again. So let's get that green going again. So nice dark green. And do it with the yellow. So fill the brush with yellow. I'm just going to take a little bit off. I'm going to get the tip dark green. And I'm going to do it again. So here we go. Down, up, press down, up, press down, up. And you can see you get, get quite a nice effect with that. And I can't resist it because I love doing me bamboo leaves. I'm going to put some bamboo leaves, which you would not color load for, I don't think. Well, I should do this, shouldn't I? My M's and my W's. Do an M this time. As I say, these are very important, but I'm not very good at them. There we go. And then so we can do a frond. Nice delicate things. And then press, 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 press and lift, press and lift. And again, <coughs> over here, press, press, press. And then we could have one from here. Press, 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 lift, 
lift. Well, sorry, it should be press and lift on each one. So you can see you can get quite a nice effect. Good for doing cards and things, with not very much uh, oh, uh, time. But again, it's that practice to understand how those brush strokes work. Um, another nice thing to do, although I've completely forgotten how to do them, is a kind of peony effect. So I'll move that over a bit. And again, so I can, I've got a nice red-yellow palette here, so I've got a nice bit of yellow paint here. And I'm going to pit, pick up a bit of red on the end. And I can't remember how to do this, but it's uh, the way of doing petals. So you press it down, and then you go in a circle, sort of. No, obviously I can't remember how to do it. But never mind. <coughs> uh, but I just want to show you uh, the nice effects you can get with things like this. Uh, uh -uh. So I'm just taking a little bit off the red on the bottom, and again, so I get this nice effect. That's very startling when you use red. So again, fill the brush with yellow, and red on the end. And as I say, I'm pretty sure, this is called color loading, and I'm pretty sure this uh, is also features in Chinese brush painting. Because that's all wet, it's all doing all sorts of interesting things. I wonder what happens when you do a petal. Let's have a look. So I'm just going to pick up the end there. Ooh. Hey, birds of paradise. Flowers. <laughs> and it's just, the, again, giving yourself permission to play and figuring out what your uh, the brush strokes and getting that muscle memory going. Um, there's another nice little stroke, uh, and they call them such lovely things. One's called a... Um, a nail stroke, which is quite useful. Eek. Let's get some of these washes going. Let's have some red on the go. Uh, I can remember. So if you're doing a chrysanthemum, for instance, one of those rather flouncy ones, you go dot, 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 dot. So that's the middle of your chrysanthemums. And then you do this kind of tick. So you go down, you press, and then you flick. Press, flick, press, flick, press, flick, press, flick, press, flick. Press flick, and you should get something like a chrysanthemum. Uh, one of those flouncy ones, I should say. Uh, and then if I do color loading, sorry, I'm just experimenting now. Um, so press flick, press flick, press flick, press flick. Blah. As you can see, I'm very out of practice. This is something you really have to practice, and I'm very out of practice. But I always remember the bamboo. I just want to show you a couple of things uh, that I actually did in Jane Dwight's class, which was lovely, lovely to do. So you have, so this is a Quink Ink Moonscape with bamboo, which is much better than the one I actually did. So you start out with this pale wash uh, and do your pale one, your furthest away one, and then you have a medium wash, and then you do that one, and then you have your more or less pure ink and then you do that one and then again I sprayed a little moon there and you can put the moon anywhere you like really it's really good fun to do and I'm uh, I just love doing that one uh, this is one uh, I think it's that way up again this is actually on Chinese paper and this is uh, when I did it she was very kind and said this is flying white highly prized so there we go um, and you can see can you see how absorbent the paper is this is the thing about Chinese paper it's very absorbent I don't think it's got much size on it so uh, you can see how the brush strokes uh, the ink uh, or the paint spreads so you have to control the water on your paint really and then these this was after six hours of practicing so which I haven't got a chance to do again and again so this is color loaded chrysanthemums and we were taught how to do chrysanthemum leaves but you can see how satisfying it is and it's so lovely to do but you have to put in the practice it's like learning a piano or something but I hope I've given you a couple of projects you can try out and of course there are oodles of videos on the internet telling you how to do it properly but <clears throat> I highly recommend just practicing those brush strokes, particularly the orchid and the um, the bamboo leaf. I think those are very, very useful brush strokes. Okay, well, thank you all.